I just wanted to talk about some of the tools that I use. Um, part of the problem I have with my heart disease and also working in construction is I have, uh, besides arthritis, I have carpal tunnel. And um, so I, I started looking around for hammers and I found uh, titanium hammers. Uh, I forgot the name of this, this make. It is perfect for me because it has uh, a bit of a metal area here so that if you actually miss hitting something, you're not smashing up the wooden handle. Um, the wood itself is, is absorbing. Uh, titanium hammers have, um, is 10 times harder than steel. So even though the weight of the strike isn't is hard because the metal's so hard, it drives the nail in just as well without without using without fatiguing your your hand. Um, my other go-to hammer was my. I can find it over here. Okay, where are you? <clears throat> S-wing. Okay, so the S-wing, the head is very heavy. It has a rubberized grip. The problems I have with this are, it, like on its downswing, it carries a lot of weight. So it hammers very well on its own weight and you, you have to learn to kind of when you drop the head of the hammer you kind of let it kind of like almost kind of like pivot and it gives a huge extra um, force in your strike. The only problem is every time you swing up on it, it takes shoulder power and hand power. Um, titanium hammers, I think it's 10 or 20 times less vibration in a titanium hammer because they're so hard. Plus what you, uh, the, the damping that you get out of the wooden handle. So <laughs> this is very, very easy for me to lift. It's just like nothing, but it will drive a nail just as well as my heavy S-wing. So I guess a long story short, if I was gonna give someone advice about buying a hammer. This hammer was 180, I don't know, something like that. It was expensive. Uh, a Daluge, I think it's a, by Vaughn. Um, if I were to look back, see what my hands are like, I can't straighten them, my fingers. <clears throat> I would tell anyone, get yourself a hammer like this, save your hands, save your body, why wait till you get older like me just to be able to keep working and, and then spend the money on a hammer? If this is your business, if you're going to get into construction, get yourself a hammer like this. It's definitely worth it. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is probably my wife didn't really want to do this because of the cost. No, oh, no, it's too expensive. And it was like 550 bucks. And it's this Bosch chop saw. Um, this has been worth its weight in gold up here because I don't have electricity. I'm working on battery power. And this thing runs off of 18 volt battery packs that works with all my Bosch stuff. I have Bosch drills and everything. So, kind of the, when, when you get started in something like this, you have to decide what kind of um, tools you're gonna use. I decided to go with Bosch because I, I hate DeWalt. Um, I have a real problem with black. DeWalt is just a name that they bought from a, 
uh, bankrupt radial arm saw company. The Walt used to be really good in radial arm saws. People stopped buying radial arm saws when they had when they could buy the portable miter saws. So they went out of business, so Black & Decker bought the name. And then Black & Decker thought, well, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to name all our tools DeWalt because DeWalt has a good name in the construction industry, even though what you're really buying is Black & Decker. Now, back in those days, Black & Decker used to bring in Alu products. These are, this is a German company or German or Swiss, things made in Switzerland, excellent stuff. Like this is, I'm talking about probably 40 years ago that they were bringing this stuff in. All my stuff still works, <clears throat> kind of. So what Black & Decker did was they bought the company and they changed the color of the plastic from silver and black or dark gray to uh, yellow and black and called it DeWalt. I had a friend who was a, um, he was a tool repair guy and I had a switch that needed replacing on a three inch sander belt sander and i tried looking everywhere and so when i went to wood shows i would see that the dewalt sander looked exactly like the alu and i said that's exactly the same and i, I need a switch for that where do i get that and the guys there would say oh no 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 they're not the same company no absolutely not not um they kept denying it, and then this friend of mine who was a tool repair guy says, Black & Decker let everyone who bought Alu products after they bought the company up, they stopped supplying them with any repair parts. Nothing. You could not buy anything. I had a, uh, a compound miter saw from them. That was their first big seller. The biscuit joiner, a 3-inch belt sander, a 4-inch belt sander, a, uh, an electric plane. There's probably more things that I can't think of. They let everybody who bought product from them, this is Black & Decker, they let them all down. They wouldn't give them any parts. I would go and talk to the guys at the shows. These are Black & Decker guys and they just, no, it's, you know. I finally um, did a lot of phone calling down in the States at the headquarters of Black & Decker and I finally found someone that told me what happened is they just bought the name and they stopped giving parts because they wanted us to buy DeWalt. They wanted to disassociate themselves with... In, in other words, what they're trying to do is they're trying to have this, this facade, this name that DeWalt is this big old tool company. <laughs> it's not DeWalt, it's Black & Decker. And DeWalt is just a name from a, from a bankrupt radial arm saw company. Um, they disassociated themselves with ALU. A German company um, and and said no 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 this is made in the United States we're making it we're we're DeWalt we're making these tools for you and you could look at the tools and they're exactly the same as the tools I had that were DeWalt so it was really deceitful of them also terrible customer relations to allow your customers to not give them replacement parts um, like I said, I bought a lot of tools and a lot of guys were with me in buying a lot of tools. The tools were fantastic, but for Black & Decker to let me down, um, I have to say though that because I'm cheap, I uh, ended up buying a DeWalt thickness planer because it was on sale and I needed a thickness planer. Um, but, <laughs> so my tool of choice ended up being Bosch. Um, I had good luck with Bosch stuff in the past. Uh, their stuff all works. So, like I said, when you decide to go into something like this, and you're going to get start cordless, which you have to do because you're off grid. We used to take all our batteries home, charge them at home, bring them up fully charged, or else if it, a couple times we rented a place up here, so we would take it back to the place we rented and charge our tools there. So we'd have tools for the day. Now I have enough solar power um, to charge our the tools up here so I don't have to take them back and forth. But 
we use like we have a circular saw uh, light the light that I'm getting here that saw which has been fantastic so I don't have to go and start the generator every time I have to make a, a cut so we have a lot of tools that are um, that are Bosch 18 volt um, but a lot of batteries but I mean it's something that we needed to do um, so yeah uh, I'm gonna go make a cut now watch something go wrong <laughs> messy issue with my caulking. I uh, kind of messed my caulking gun out because the tip wasn't clear and it squeezed caulking out and that got stuck and we can't find the right tip for it so I got caulking all over the place and that took quite a while. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, um, if I haven't explained this before, this is not a pole for pole dancing. It's not here for my wife to keep me entertained at night. Um, <laughs> it's a vent pipe for the plumbing. Um, you can vent the plumbing downstairs also. The only problem is this is going to vent our septic and it's not going to smell very good. So going up through the roof, getting it high up off the ground as possible is probably the best thing that we can do. Now there is heat loss through here, but I've caulked all around where this 2x4 goes and I had, this had to be put in before we put the roof on um, because the um, flashing had to go on and the hole had to be cut and all those things. So I kind of, this is in the way, this is where the wall is going to go to divide the master bedroom with the hallway and then there's going to be the loft area with all the bedrooms for all the overflow.
So I just wanted to point out here, um, you don't want to compress insulation. You don't want to have to cut it a two by four. Now, because the pine goes up against here, if it was drywall, it'd be the same thing. I guess drywall, you can tape the corners and that would hold that. The problem is with pine, if you have nothing here, it, the boards kind of can be floppy and when you put the boards coming in from the side, you can start pushing them in. So how to keep it straight? Well, I just took a piece of drywall. This is like an end stop for drywall, right? And there is a rafter up here nailed into that and this goes right up against the stud there so when I nail these pieces in it has to stop right all the way along yeah you can see where my hand is it stops the board from going in I have to do this wall first the end wall and then the ceiling boards will butt into that I'm going to try and back up here without tripping you can see how so that's the end wall and it's done with the metal all the way up I'm not focusing anyways on that side also okay
somebody's trying to copy me.